What up, y'all? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with the season finale of Powers, episode 10. I'm tired as fuck. I just finished my second edits on Smells Like Teen Spirit Volume 1, Eris, which will be out this coming Tuesday. At the end of this video, you will have a sneak peek of the cover, which is fucking fabulous. Can't wait for you all to see it. I've been working so hard. I'm tired of the motherfucker. And it's two something here in St. Louis. And I just finished watching the episode of Power. I hope y'all really appreciate all the hard work I put into these videos. Because if y'all only knew the process that it takes for me to do these videos every week. I am so happy that this fucking season is done and over with. Because this is literally a 10 hour process for me every Saturday when I film these reviews for you all. It takes me about an hour and a half to two hours just to watch the episode and take down all of my notes then as i'm filming this it takes me about an hour or so then i have to load it onto my computer that's about another 20 30 minutes then i have to save the video and convert the files that takes about three hours maybe sometimes four during that time period i go to sleep for a little while wake up edit the video editing itself is a four hour process every sunday morning i get up at least about nine or ten o'clock just to edit it by the time that's done it's afternoon then I have to save the video, which is another hour. Then I have to upload it onto YouTube, which takes two and a half hours. So when I be getting tweets and stuff from you all, where the video, where the video, it kind of annoys the fuck. Now I ain't going to even say it kind of, it annoys the fuck out of me. Because if I, now y'all know how much it takes for me to do these videos and how much work I put into it. Because I love it and I love seeing you all's re reactions to it and making you all laugh. But this is a motherfucking process. I ain't like some of these other YouTube just to get up here and, you know, just run down the episode really quick. I try to give you all quality programming here at Let Me Pink channel. So, I'm happy that you all been rocking with me for the last two seasons I've been doing reviews on Power. I'm glad this shit is over with. <laughs> Let's get into the episode. So the episode starts off with Greg standing at the pier waiting for Ruiz. Um, but Ruiz, of course, ain't showing up because he is what? <laughs> Dead to the bed. So he receives a call that Ruiz has been murdered. So he rushes over to the crime scene and gets the recorder button from off of his coat. So little does he know, but Ghost is watching everything from afar. So he calls Angie, who's in bed asleep. And he asks her, is there any indictment for him and Tommy for the murder of Lobos? And she's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. She asks, why is he asking her that? And he says he doesn't trust her to tell him. And she says she'll ask about Ruiz. And she goes back to his office and he closes the blind and shit because he's trying to be incognito because you know he over there doing some shit he ain't supposed to be doing. So he calls someone out at the Federales um, to ask who gave Miguel Sandoval a tip the Lobos meeting in Manhattan a while back. The person on the phone says they'll get back to him when they can find out the information. He then attaches the recorder to a USB cord and he's about to place the USB cord into his laptop when Donovan comes into the office, aka Milk Dugan. So, and is pissed off. He says he's pissed that Greg went down to the crime scene already and didn't even call and tell him what the fuck was going on. He says that everybody thinks it's his fault and, and that if he's been doing shit off the books, he better have some damn good fucking evidence. So if not, they're both fucked. So Greg then calls his partner, a.k.a. his mentor from when he was, I guess, in the little police academy or whatever, and asks him, can they meet up and talk? Sir... And Ghost are in his office eating pizza and shit. And Proctor asks him what's on the tape, but Ghost doesn't know. He suspects it may be Tommy killing Ruiz. Proctor is pissed. He's like, fuck, my nigga. I, I do not have time for this bullshit today. Proctor says that now it's a conflict of interest because he steals Tommy attorney. Ghost reminds him that he's the one that signs that motherfucker's paycheck and what's in the best interest for him is in the best interest for Tommy. Ghost also tells Proctor that he's not even sure if Greg has the recorder or not. Ghost tells him that Angie is no longer his girlfriend and that she's with Knox. Proctor then says, so you fucked that up too. We should all just have a group text. So we can all keep up with all your fuck-ups. <laughs> it was like, read this ass, Proctor. Proctor says, if the recorder comes to light, he'll get it thrown out because it's illegal. But if it's played in court, Tommy will be locked the fuck up for killing Ruiz. And if Ghost is on the tape too, he's going down. And I didn't like the part where they revealed that, that Angie is back fucking Greg. Because he was like, uh, he's, she's fucking Greg again. Like, 
rolls off the shoulder like it's nothing. But getting still when he when Tasha fuck look nigga Tasha fuck Sean. It was a big ass problem. I guess that says a lot about his feelings for Angela because he didn't give a fuck. Like, I guess he even knows she a hoe, but whatever. So, Sex and Angela are in the lounge area in the, in, at the little precinct, and he tells her that Ruiz has been killed, and she's shocked by this news because she didn't know. So, Ghost is with Karen, and she thanks him for his payment in full as Milan's little girlfriend is staring him up and down, and Ghost looking at her like, bitch, you got something you need to say, ma'am? Uh-huh. So, Milan overhears Ghost and Karen discussing his party and their impending partnership and truth going global. Milan is at his little warehouse shopping and his knives and shit just looking like a good old Serbian killer and I just want to sit on his face. And Tommy is escorted in by Peter or Petra or whatever the fuck his name is. So Petra tells him that Tommy has arrived. Milan is like, I know. Now you can go play with the other little boys. Goodbye. And Petra look at him like, oh really sir? Like now you giving me your ass to kiss Tommy your new ace boom cone? Like really nigga? I thought me and you was like this. I thought we was on some... You and me will never part, my kid, uh, that type shit. After Petra leaves the room, Milan tells Tommy that they can't kill Ghost until the deal with Karen goes through. Then Ghost can indeed become James St. Patrick's name. Milan says that Karen has a fondness for Dre. And Tommy was like, I don't really understand why. And Milan says he once thought the same of him, but look at how far he's come. He's finding his true potential, while Petra seems to be losing his. Milan ain't here for all this little soaking and shit that Petra been doing lately, getting jealous of him and Tommy's relationship. Milan tells Tommy that he wants him to pull the trigger and kill Ghost when it comes time. So Ghost is scaling buildings and shit like he's MacGyver or James Bond or some shit. And he breaks into Greg's apartment searching for the recorder. So Greg is... At his little beach bum friend mentor's apartment listening to the tape. He hears Tommy's voice on the tape. Then we switch back to Ghost. Rummaging around Greg's apartment. He comes across Angela's little lace bra on his bed. He feeling some type of way. I'm just like, okay, gag me with a spoon, goddammit. Then sees all of the evidence that Greg has been piling up over the last few months. All on the wall and all on Greg's desk. As he's searching around, the door opens and it's Angela. And Angela's like, Greg... Where are you? How did everything go with MJ? I called you, but you didn't pick up. Greg, are you here? And so he runs and hides in the bathroom. And she walking around the house looking for Greg and shit. And she even opened the bathroom door, but don't even realize he's standing behind it. So she leaves since she thinks Greg ain't at home. And so he then decides it's time for him to jet in case any more motherfuckers just decide to walk up in the motherfucking crib. So he climbs back out the window. But when he's trying to lock the window back, he does not have on one of his gloves and therefore leaves a fingerprint on the fucking window and he drops his little wrench or whatever the fuck he was using. So he trying to hurry up, get down the steps to pick up the wrench so he don't leave no evidence behind, but he left some motherfucking evidence behind, which was his goddamn fingerprints. And I'm like, nigga, that's what you get. So we switch back to Greg and he hears Tommy on the recorder say he and Ghost killed Lobos. Greg is all excited because he's like, I got him. I got, finally got them motherfuckers. But his mentor reminds him that it doesn't tie back to James because they never say his name. Greg is like, if he did it, she did it. Angela Valdez, like, he is just determined to bring these motherfuckers down because they hurt him. He is a butt hurt. So Greg says that if Tommy and Ghost know the route to the Lobos transfer, it's because Angela told them. Old boy says it doesn't count because she isn't mentioned on the tape. Greg then hears Tommy kill Ruiz and he's just like disgusting. He can't believe this shit. But then he's like ecstatic because now he feels like he has all the evidence he needs. But his mentor is like, hold up, little bruh. You can't use the tape because it doesn't exist, remember? And he was using Ruiz unofficially and put Ruiz in grave danger and got him killed. His mentor says to him, you'll end up sucking dick right in prison next to both of them. <laughs> and I was like, go ahead, all mentor. Greg says his mentor, unless I can get one of them to flip. The mentor says, what did I teach you in class? Who has the most to lose and who do I want more? So then we see Ghost. He's on his way back to the club and he gets pulled over by the police. We all know the police officer is Greg. So Greg was like, uh, can you step out the car, please, sir? So go steps out the car, and Greg is being all extra shit, push him up against the car, get the pads down all rough, like, what you got on you? And Ghost's like, bruh, 
Nigga, you trying me right about now? You trying. He's like, nigga, I ain't got nothing on me. I ain't got nothing on me. Back up off me. Back up off me. Greg's like, you know, my bad. You know, I just know that you, how you like to kill motherfuckers. I got to be sure. So Greg says, tells him that he knows that he and Tommy killed Lobos together. He also says he know they didn't do it alone, that they had Angela's help because she's the leak. He tags Ghost to give her up and he'll give him a deal. Ghost's like, if you had anything on me, I'd be in the back of your police car right now. So I need for you to like... Adios, amigos. Kind of about to do anything for you to bring me in. Greg was like, you know what? You're right. All right. You got the most to lose in this situation. You know that? You got your family, your club, your reputation. It's all clean. There's no real proof that you're ghost. Because I'm not. Right, right. Except that Angela knows who you are. That's why she came back to me to pick up the pieces. Then Greg leans into his ear and he says... That's why she let me in. And by in, he mean into that box. He got some of that good pussy. Uh-huh. So, Ghost is pissed off. He's sitting over. Jesus be a fence. Jesus be a motherfucking fence. I'm about to kill this cracker. It then goes on to say, she loves you and you went back to your wife. If I give her the opportunity, I'm sure she's going to burn your ass like she did me and those were the words that we would ring around the world after this episode went off let me say it back to you one more time she loved you and you went back to your wife if i give her the opportunity i'm sure she's gonna burn your ass like she did me and that opportunity was greg dying that's all that bitch needed to turn on that motherfucker because you know this bitch ain't got no allegiance to nobody but her and her old quesadilla ass pussy but i digress so Ghost still thinking that she motherfucking Ariel and shit from fucking Little Mermaid. He, if you think Angie is guilty of murder, you're wrong. Greg says, I wonder if she gonna say the same thing about you. Then Ghost leaves and Greg calls Mike and asks him to meet him at his place to discuss this whole Lobos thing. Ghost pulls up to the club and Tommy is waiting on him. Tommy tells Ghost that Milana's looking to kill him. After his big ass party and after he signed his contract with um, Karen. His so Tommy says they're going to have to make a move during the party. While Milan's guard is down. And Ghost like shit. I don't know how we going to do that. Everybody going to be in that motherfucker. And Tommy ain't trying to hear that shit. He was like look motherfucker. You better figure out a motherfucking way. Because we ain't going to get another shot. Mike comes over to see Greg. And Greg tells Mike that Angela is the leak. But he can't prove it. But he knows that she's the fucking leak. So Mike tells him to talk. Greg gets to telling Mike that he drew a little bit out of line to get this information. And Mike stopped me like, look, if it's going to be admissible, then it doesn't count. Greg says, I can link her to the Lobos murder plot. His phone then rings right before he can get to spilling all the tea. The Mexican federales returning his phone call. So he in the hallway on the phone with them. And the man tell Greg that they can't find any info on a tip being made recently to a Miguel Sandoval in regarding to Lobo's whereabouts. The agent Rivera in that department died a year ago. So Greg is like, oh really? Oh, okay. Well you know what? I'm not looking to get no phone books right now but if I decide to, I will give you all a call as soon as possible. Alright, thank you. Have a good night. And so Greg hangs up. And so he like, oh my God, this nigga is the motherfucking leak. And he in my spot. I got to play it cool. I got to play it cool. Like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Um, so Greg said, you know, you want a bird? And so he goes in the kitchen and he's in the kitchen like, fuck. Like, he saw a pizza and everything together. And then grabs them both the beer. He gives one to Mike. And Mike says that he sus suspected that it was Angela the whole time. I'm like, really, Mike? Really? Okay, girl. So Greg brings up the GPS tracking on Lobos, and Mike says she obviously told him where to find it. Except she wasn't in your office when we discussed it. It was just kind of in me and you. So Mike looking around like, fuck, what the fuck? Who was that on the phone, Greg? The Federales. You know that tip you got about the meeting where we arrested Lobos? It never happened, Mike. It's organized. I saw you outside of Hugo Sanchez building. I was trying to solve this case. You were trying to cover your tracks, weren't you? I almost fucking died because of you. Look, they threatened my family. I had no choice. We always have a choice. Look, Greg. And then Mike stands up and Greg backs the fuck back because he don't know what this nigga's capable of. Angela is dirty. You know it and I know it. St. Patrick Egan, the sketch, what she did to you, your career, she could already be in prison. 
We can offer her to MJ. You mean frame her. We can take her down as the leak. We can finally bring in St. Patrick Egan as Lobo's distributors. If Angela is the leak, it means you were right about everything. The allegations she made against you, everyone who thought you were crazy, it all goes away. You're a hero. You said you have a piece of evidence. I'll get around the admissibility problem. We can make this work. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. She's dirty, but on this, she's clean. And I'm like, God damn it, Greg, this where you fucked up. Like, you should have just played along, you dumb fuck. God, everybody know that. But Greg is Greg. Greg dumb as fuck. I'm sorry, Mike. I got to take you in. Really, Greg, you just thought you was going to take him in? He's going to be like, okay, lock me up. I was a bad guy. Sorry, bitch. You deserve to die with your dumb ass. Greg turns around, which was also a dumb ass mistake. And Mike then take out his motherfucking silence like, bitch, <laughs> you think I'm about to go to jail? <laughs> no, sir, not tonight. <laughs> Today is TGI Friday, bitch. I'm about to go home with my kids. Greg is like, hold up, hold on, homeboy. Take it easy. I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you a deal. If you pull that trigger, that means you're no better than Lobos. One day, your beautiful little daughter will know her daddy is a murderer. And I guess he thought they was going to make Mike feel some type of way, feel guilty. But uh, obviously, it didn't. So Greg then tries to lunge for the gun, which we all know, once again, was stupid as fuck. And Mike then shoots the gun, and it shoots him in the neck. So Greg is like... <coughs> <laughs> and he bagging all back and shit. I'm looking at him like, nigga, I didn't want to have to do this to you. You should have just went along with the plan, goddammit. Then holds up his hand, and then Mike shoots him again. And when he shoots him, the bullet goes through his hand and hits him dead in the chest. And that's what finally kills him. So Mike then plants the burner phone in Greg's drawer and he was smart enough to then grab the beer that he was drinking on the way out to show that there was no one else there with Greg at the time of the murder so they won't know who the fuck killed Greg and so I'm just like R.I.P. Greg what y'all bring to the repass um since he white I'll bring a nice bean salad um some chickpea soup sweet potatoes with marshmallows guacamole like I don't know like but rest in peace your dumb ass then we see Milk Chocolate, a.k.a. Donovan, at Greg's apartment. And then they find the burner phone and conf confiscate it. Angela then arrives and Sex is standing out the door like, damn, Angela, it's a bad time for you to be here. And then Donovan walk out and was like, damn, Angela, you know, I'm sorry for your loss. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And so then they escort Greg dead body out on the motherfucking stretcher. And she's like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand what happened. What happened to Greg? What happened? Bring him back. Let me talk to him. And I'm like, bitch, he dead. Sit down somewhere. Reek and Slim, aka Kanan, are in his car talking about chicks and shit. And they sipping on lean. And Tariq asks what happened to his hand. And dude was like, you know, you don't even want to know about all that. So Tariq was like, you know what? It's time for me to go to school. I'm already late. I missed first period. Let me go. And Slim is like, nah, hold up. And so he go in the back seat and grab this package. He's like, I need you to take this to my boy Ray Ray and bring me back what he give to you. Tariq say, what is it? And Slim is like, you know what? Never mind. I'll do it myself. I thought you knew better than to ask me some shit like that. It's all right. You ain't ready. No, 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 no. I'll do it. Where's Ray Ray? I'm so tired of Tariq. I'm just so tired of this dumbass, unrealistic ass storyline they give him to this little boy. Like, I was down for it at first with the whole, you know, I hate my daddy because he ain't shit. I'm tired of them lying to me. My daddy left my mama for this Puerto Rican ass bitch. And I feel some type of way because this nigga ain't never around. He ain't never heard. He play daddy when he feel like it. I felt the anger. I got it. I understand it. But this dumb, gullible ass shit that even though he's not street smart he didn't grow up in the hood you still got two hood ass parents that raise you enough to know right from wrong and know when somebody's playing you this boy ain't that fucking gullible and now you just be like okay i'll take this package i want to be a dope boy yay i want to be a dope boy All right. like come on now come be realistic at least a little bit. Like, just have him just be like, yeah, I want to get in the game. I want to be like my daddy at least. Have him trying to be like his father. At least if that's what you're going to have him trying to get into his life. But this whole, I want to still dope to be accepted. 
yeah, I'm gonna do it. Like, that's just dumb, but okay, whatever. It ain't my damn show. Tasha and Ghost sitting at the dining room table, and Tasha says to Ghost, Why'd you come in so late last night? Went to see Angela? Angela and I ain't talking too much these days. But I did talk to Tommy. He killed Ruiz for being a traitor to Milan. And then Tasha's sitting there like, oh shit, like fuck, I didn't think it was gonna go down this way. So she says, did Tommy say how he figured that out? And Go says, Ruiz told him right before he killed him. He knew that was my only way out. He shut it down. Tommy doesn't want you to get out. Trust me, I know it. I thought that at base level, we were back on point. I mean, after I helped with Holly, and then he realized he fucked up. He says, I mean, after everything we've been through, Tommy is changing, and I don't think it's for the better. Helped him with Holly like what? I'll make sure Raina got her tap shoes. Oh, uh, uh, Raina, baby, got the tap shoes because y'all always forgetting them. Every motherfucker week you forget them. You got the motherfucker shoes? Oh, uh, yeah, daddy, I'm looking for them now. And then he gets up and walks away. And, and then Tasha texts Tommy, can you come over? We need to talk. Now, this scene pissed me off as well. Because I was reading the comments last week on the video and everybody was mad that Tasha told Tommy about Ghost plan to, um kill Milan and that they needed to stop it. The writer Courtney Kipp clarified that the reason why Tasha did it was to protect her family and her children because she knew that Milan was going to kill them if Ghost kept going. It was not going to work out right. So she was doing what she needed to, to protect her family because she knows that ghosts um, sometimes don't even know when to stop and she has to protect come in and protect him at times so i felt like she was in the right as a mother you're gonna do what you need to do to protect your kids yeah ghosts always come through but all season he had been fucking up he hadn't won and courtney kemp also clarified that what really shook tasha was when this motherfucker infiltrated their house nobody has ever gotten that close to home this motherfucker infiltrated their house had this nigga shook made them sit down and have body parts and shit for dinner <laughs> like so as a mother what the fuck would you do you gonna protect your kids so i was 100 percent team tasha now where they dropped the ball that for me is now going into this whole storyline of he can't find out that she told Tommy because then he's going to be mad at her and I want to fuck with her again. I don't like that whole aspect of it because the way that they planned this whole thing where Tasha and Angela both did something to protect Ghost out of fear and love, but they kind of played it where Angela fucked Greg and it was like, okay, she fucked Greg to protect me. I can get past that. Eh. But then Tasha, I told your plan to Tommy to protect us and the kids, then that's going to be the, she don't support me. She want to see me fail. She still don't believe in me. I can't fuck with her. One is worse than the other. And I don't like that. It's still demonizing what Tasha does and making what Angela does seem to be the right thing all the time because he's so, because he loves her. I don't like this shit. I just don't like this whole thing, how they play their characters and, play favoritism towards one more so than they do the other it's like they demonize tasha in his eyes and i fucking hate it it gets on my fucking nerves like oh my god i don't know what the fuck is going on over there but i just be feeling like some colorism shit be coming into play but that's just my whole take on the thing once again it ain't my goddamn show petra is somewhere in a motherfucking parking lot smoking a fucking cigarette when tommy roll up on him with a gun tommy then says to petra how did it feel the other day when Milan cock slapped you in front of the whole social club? How does it feel that after everything you've done for him, he chooses me over you? I got a plan that will make both of us rich and happy. But that means that I got to trust you and you got to trust me. Are you down? So then we switched to Angela in her little meeting with my sex, Sandoval, Big Head, <laughs> Donovan. And Ghost texts her and says, I need to see you. So MJ come in and she says they found a burner seal at Greg's place and it's the phone that called Lobos the day he went missing. It's the phone of someone in that office that leaked Lobos location. It looks like Greg was the leak. They think he was killed by one of Lobos henchmen trying to chop loose ends and there was no forced entry unless his killer was let in through the window. Angela then whispers to Sax that Greg never left his window unlocked. Then Sax is like, I just bet you knew. <laughs> so 
The case is now closed. Tommy gets off the elevator at Tasha's crib all fucking frantic. He's like, Tasha, what's the big emergency? The big emergency is that you killed Ruiz. Ghost came to me this morning wondering why you stopped his plan to get out. He cannot know that I told you, Tommy. He's not gonna know that you said nothing. You know he's not wrong for getting away from Milan. Listen, Tosh. I got a plan to get us all out from underneath the line. And then he kind of like grabbed her a little bit, kind of like he grabbed Holly. He had that little crazy look in his eye shit. And Tasha was looking like, hold up, motherfucker. Hold up. They don't love you like I love you. Slow down. They don't love you like I love you. Back up. They don't love you like I love you. Sit down. <laughs> Sound just like Ghost right now. He's always got a plan. It's always about trusting him. Yeah, well, trust me. We all play our parts right now. Everyone will get what they want. As long as Milan and Ghost stay in the dark. I'm trusting you, Tommy. Ghost can be a lying sometimey motherfucker, but he's still the father of my kids. And I need to protect him, even from himself. I'm protecting him, too. I always do. And then he gets on the elevator and Tasha runs in behind him and stops the doors from closing. And she says, This morning, Ghost said something about helping you with Holly. What does he mean, Tommy? Holly? Nothing. Nothing happened, T. Stick to the plan. And then he gets on the elevator. She looking at him like, you motherfuckers killed her. I know you did. I know you fucking did. Angela meets with ghosts at their little favorite diner where she eat the most stale ass french fries. And she says to him, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Why do we have to meet here? Well, Angie, you always like the fries. What did you do last night, Jamie? I thought we weren't supposed to ask each other those kind of questions anymore. See, he playing games. That's what them niggas be doing when they be trying to get up in your head and your drawers at the same time. What did you do last night? I went to work at the club. Did you get that little play on words? I went to work because he did go to work, but he was at ghost work, not Jamie work. Did you have a nice night with Agent Knox? I didn't see him last night. Well, I did. He pulled me over. He didn't tell you? He accused me of killing Lobos, which I, I told you he would. What did you tell him? I told him he had no proof, Angie. He tried to get me to say that you were the leak. I told him you were innocent. So, that is, so does that mean that you believe me now? I don't know what to believe. And then he tries to hold her hand across the table. I told you that I needed to protect you from Greg. I'd do anything to protect you. And then she recalls her hand like, hold up, motherfucker. What you mean by you was to protect me from Greg? That you'll do anything. So now her wheels in her head is running. And she thinking, did he kill Greg? Did this motherfucker kill Greg last night? Now he want to share french fries and a milkshake with me? Oh, hell no. He want to say you sorry. Now you want to call me crying. Now you want to see me wildin'. Well, I'm the one that's lying. And I don't feel bad about it. Exactly what you get. Stop interrupting my grinding. Stop interrupting my grinding. <laughs> I ain't thinking about you. Angela then says, I agreed to meet with you because the leak case is closed. They found the person, so I'm in the clear. You and me, we're done. And then she gets up to walk away. He running behind her like the little bitch he is. And he says, Angie, you still love me. And I still love you. She walk away. Because she like, nigga, I'm not fucking with you no more. And he walking and looking at her like a fucking stalker. And I was just like, I'm so tired of this little storyline with them. I'm so happy that next season they're they going to stop with this bullshit. Because it needs to stop now, this whole... Shakespearean ass love story they trying to play off of these motherfuckers. This old whirlwind ass love affair that don't nobody see and ain't nobody here for. Like, ain't don't nobody love nobody that damn much. No, sorry. Like, cause I'm so sick of him running up behind this bitch. So sick of it. But at the end of the episode, <laughs> you see what his ass got. So, Tariq walking around trying to find Ray Ray. He like, hey, you seeing Ray Ray? Anybody seeing Ray Ray? So and then he walk up on this motherfucker. He like, you Ray Ray? And dude was like, yeah. So he tried to hand him the package all out in the crib. He's like, hold up, little motherfucker. No, we got to go in the back. So they go in the alleyway, and the dude opens the package and finds a gun. He then tells Tariq to turn around and face the wall, and then he's under arrest. He put him in handcuffs, and then he placed him in the back of the squad car, and then who is in the motherfucking driver's seat? Jukebox killer ass. So we ain't seen her since, like, episode five. So she turned around. She tells Tariq to give up the, the, the person who gave him the gun, because, you know, he ain't from these parts. He a little old suburban ass nigga like he don't know nothing about their life so we all realize at this point they tested him to see if he'll turn on Kanan does Kanan have his trust does Kanan really have his ear is he going to be loyal to Kanan of course he does not tell so Kanan then gets in the front seat and he's like 
I knew you wasn't gonna say nothing, little nigga. And so he realized he was set up. He's like, oh man, y'all was initiating me. I'm a blood now, I'm a crip. And I'm like, oh God, I hate this little boy. So Angie goes to Greg's apartment and then she goes over to the window and examines it. So then she steps out onto the fire escape and she dusts it for prints. And she finds three fingerprints all right. So then she goes back to the office and starts running the fingerprints in the system when Sax comes in and tries to hit on her <laughs> and try to fuck later on that night because she's supposed to be vulnerable over Greg Dine. And she's like, nigga, I ain't that motherfucking vulnerable. I'm like, bitch, yes, you are because you would give your pussy to anybody that give you a hamburger, bitch. You that girl, Angela. And everybody in the office knows that that pussy is up for grabs. Tariq Jukebox and that other big head dude are sipping lame and Jukebox eggs. Tariq, how much money he thinks his dad is worth. Tariq's like, I don't know a lot. You know, we got an elevator. <laughs> I can tell you that much. So, Jukebox sees that Kanan is getting attached to Tariq. She don't like that shit at all. She's like, motherfucker, well, our plan was to kill this little nigga and get back at Ghost. She says they need to hold Tariq for ransom. And I told y'all that shit in my fucking prediction video. That they was gonna hold this nigga up for ransom and then try to kill him. Girl, I peeped this shit from a mile away before the season even fucking started. But, okay. They still ain't called and tried to hire me. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Too damn predictable at this point. Box says to Kanan that it's a win-win. They hold him for ransom, get some money, then kill him and get revenge back on Ghost. Kanan agrees, but is hesitant because now he's grown fond of Tariq. Tariq is the son that Sean never was. Told you they were going to play on the whole scenario of Sean being a son to Ghost and then Tariq being a son to Kanan. And Kanan taken away from Ghost what Ghost took from him. He never was able to have that close bond relationship with Sean because Tasha and Ghost got him locked up. So now Kanan is doing the same thing to him, but now he's called feelings for the little boy and actually cares for Tariq, but now he has to go along with the get down because Jukebox killed that ass. So it's the night of the party. Karen and her father are there. Dre then opens up the back door of his people from the little barbecue spot. He tells them to act cool and do not pop off in the club because there's a lot of white folks that are ready to call them motherfucking popos. If anything, pop off. So Mr. Bassett tells Ghost that he has earned their partnership. He gives him a contract to sign. Ghost signs a the contract. They cheers and shit. And then we see Tasha walk through the club and looking like a little black Grecian goddess and shit. And she run into Milan, little girlfriend. And Tasha said, what the fuck are you doing here? Oh, you know, it's our club too. And Tasha looked at her like, okay, bitch. You tried it, but okay, Miss Girl. Milan then steps to Ghost and says, now that the deal is done, we need to talk. I don't have a damn thing to say to you. And then Ghost walks off. Milan follows him and says, oh, but we do. You are completely deserted. At least you picked a good suit for your last night on earth. Have you now? Ghost pulls out a gun and sticks it to his side and says, no, no, I have you now. Do exactly as I say. Whatever your foolish plan is, it's not going to work. This time it was you who failed to notice me. Look around. And then Milan looks around the club and sees Dre and all his partners with guns to find men's back. So Milan is like, this little motherfucker got me for real. So Dre then escorts Petra and all them other little dudes out the club. So Milan, chick, is all to the side and she piece everything that happened and she goes to walk over to go help Milan when Tasha roll up on her. So rock a bye, baby. Bitch, I dare you. Bitch, I motherfucking dare you, bitch. Go ahead and try it, bitch. You're going to be laid out on this motherfucking carpet, bitch. So Ghost looks back at her. She smiling like, I did it. <laughs> I did it, daddy. You come back home, I did it. And he look at her like, okay, bitch. So then he says, you're alone now. Walk. So Ghost takes some line downstairs where Tommy is waiting. And Tommy says, it's about goddamn time. And Milan says to Tommy, after everything I tried to teach you, Tommy then says, get in the back of the car. Like, ain't nobody trying to hear you and your sensei ass talk. So Milan, Tommy, and Ghost are in this little abandoned warehouse and they walk in and Milan is in front of them. Tommy then says, stop right here. Milan turns around. He says, so this is it? This is your revenge? Tommy says, it's not personal, Milan. Then Ghost says, just business. 
He and Tommy are both holding guns to Milan's head. Ghost then says, we could have killed you in the club, but we wanted you to know that we outsmarted you this time. So you die here. Milan turns to Tommy and says, you learned. Like it was a proud moment for him. Like he was happy for the little nigga. Tommy then says, nighty night, Milan. Rest easy. I ain't gonna eat you. And then they both shoot him in this motherfucking head three times. Pow, pow, pow. And this motherfucker fall back and he did. her like why in the fuck would y'all kill his character off his character was fucking genius we needed more than one season of milan oh my god that was such a dumb decision to kill milan off i was pissed i was pissed what y'all gonna bring his repast i'm bringing some fucking raw ass pig meat shit some pig feet or some shit since this nigga like to eat bodies but I was pissed off about that it was cute for what it was but I was pissed off about it from a writer's standpoint I would not have killed this character off so well ass because he was such a great actor and he brought such a brute force to the show and I love that he out thought ghosts all season I wish they would have played upon it at least one more season played it out for one more season because it was just so good but anywho Ghost then says that work partner and Tommy said, yeah, just like you thought it would. If I'm going to be the connect, I got to get rid of the connect. You were right, Ghost. Getting rid of Milan gives us both what we want. Ghost says it's over. And he hands Tommy his gun and Tommy takes it and Ghost says, I got to get back to the club. Setra and his homeboys walk up to him and say he spoke to Dre. Everybody straight. They back at the motherfucking barbecue spot eating ribs and potato salad and baked beans and shit. They good. He asked Tommy, did you tell Ghost we're still going to be selling drugs in his club? And Tommy says, no, nah, he'll know soon enough. Petra says, you think he'll agree to it? And Tommy says, he won't have a choice. <laughs> so Tommy is like in head boss nigga position and he ain't stopping. He don't give a fuck about what Ghost talking about. He going to do what the fuck he want to do and Ghost is going to have the motherfucking deal. So Tasha goes home to find Raina still up sitting on the couch. So she asks Raina, where's your brother? He went to hang out with that new friend of his named Slim. Slim? Who's Slim? Said he was a friend of Dre's and Sean. Dad and Uncle Tommy when they were younger. So Tasha's sitting like, what the fuck? Who in the fuck is this? What the fuck? And I'm like, really? I told y'all that this shit with Kanan was going to come out in what? I told y'all last week. It was going to come out in what? Repeat it home, back at home with me in the last 10 minutes of the episode. But I felt like that was dumb because that day when he didn't come home from school, they should have been digging in his ass. Well, who the fuck you was with then? Now they're going to ask, well, where has my son been? And who has he been kicking it with this whole time? Now y'all going to ask that question? But okay. So Tasha's scared. And so she says, let me try to call your brother. And he says, I tried that. He didn't pick up. Yeah, well, he better pick up for me. So Tasha called to read phone. And he's sitting on the couch high as a motherfucking kite. He's so high, he can't even keep his eyes open. So he sent his mom a voicemail. And he tell Kane and them, you know, I need to be getting home. Um, I don't really want to go, but my mama going to be, you know, blowing on my phone, worried about me. I think I need to go. So, Jukebox is staring at him, and he was like, you know what, you, this, this shit, and this bottle, uh, this cup of lean is really motherfucking potent. This, this stronger than anything else I've never had. And Jukebox said, yeah, yeah, we do it different up in, D, in D.C. And next thing you know, he what? He passes the fuck out on the couch. And I'm like, this little dumbass nigga, they didn't spike your motherfucking drink, you little dumbass little boy. Jukebox asks Kanan after he passed out, are they doing this or not? Kanan takes off his jacket and then sit next to Tariq with his arm wrapped around him and take, and then the dude that is with them takes the picture and then sends the picture to Tasha. Tasha then opens up her the message and sees Tariq on the couch, passed out with Kanan's arm wrapped around him. She immediately knows who it is and she is scared out of her goddamn mind. So, Raina's like, Mom, you all right? She's like, I'm fine. I got to call you daddy. So, then we switch back to the club. And Ghost is talking to Karen and her father when Angie shows up. So, he is elated. This bitch runs through the club like the ending of a movie when you see the two people running to each other in slow motion. Like, dun, 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 d
doom, 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 doom. I'm like, this dumb, soft ass nigga her. So Ghost walks up to her and he kisses her. She looking at him like, don't do that, Jamie. Do not kiss me, Jamie. I'm not here for that. I'm here on official police business. So he says to her, I never meant to hurt you, Angie. I had a reason for everything I did. It doesn't matter now. Of course it matters. Our love matters. Now we can be together. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We can't. And then she pull out her motherfucking handcuffs and starts to cuff this nigga. And he says, Angie, what the fuck are you doing? What the hell? James St. Patrick, you are under arrest for the murder of Special Agent Gregory Knox. Greg's dead? I didn't kill Greg. You have the right to remain silent. Angie, you gotta believe me. Angie, anything you do or say can and will be held against you. Why are you doing this? Why did you do this? I loved you. Then we see Big Head Donovan and Angie escort him out the club in handcuffs. Karen, Mr. Bass, and Andrea watching all from the motherfucking balcony. And Mr. Bass is like, I told you not to fuck with this nigga. God damn it, you waste my time again. So they put Ghost in the back of the squad car. And he says, Angie, I can't believe you're doing this to me. Believe it, Jamie. It's the right decision. And then he's sitting there looking like, And I hollered. I laughed so fucking hard at the end part of that goddamn scene. I was like, that's what your dumb ass get. You was so wrapped up in that bitch and her little Spanish rice, Puerto Rican, Taco Bell, quesadilla, chimichanga ass pussy of hers. You couldn't see left or right. All you saw was motherfucking stars and stripes, bitch. And this bitch played the fuck out of your dumb ass. Oh my God, we have been telling your ass in season one that she was going to plague you. And oh no, I got it on lock. She loved me. I got it. You ain't see her ass coming, did you? You saw everything else, but you ain't see this sneaky ass bitch. I'm like, nigga, how many times did she have to prove to you she wasn't shit for you to believe it? But she lighting right, so I guess she could do no wrong. Hmm. Huh. So now this nigga about to go to jail for Greg's murder. He didn't even fucking do it. But I found that to be quite unrealistic and dumb. I'm gonna be keep all the way 100. Like, all of a sudden, Angie gives so much of a damn about Greg that she would lock Ghost up? Or is it that, like what Greg said to him, if she gets the opportunity, she's gonna turn on you. All you gotta do is give her the opportunity, and the opportunity was when he broke up with her that day. You know, you can't hurt her feelings. You can't piss off. You can't tell Angie no or that you don't want to be with her. She going to figure out a way to get your ass back. So I guess it was more so that he broke up with her and went back to Tasha than Greg dying. I think Greg dying was the fucking excuse for her to hurt him like he hurt her. But still at the end day, end of the day, I guess I found that to be a dumbass reason for her to turn on ghosts and for them to become the mortal enemies that I've been praying they will become. I felt like they should have did it a different way and found a different and a better reason for her to finally turn on him. I just wish it wouldn't have been the excuse that she thinks he killed Greg. Because she don't even give a fuck about Greg. Like, let it have been something valid where she could just be like, fuck you, nigga. Like, I'm done fucking with you. Fuck you. Because this whole thing with Greg being the reason was just like, what? Okay, I guess. Don't really care, but all right. Um, so next season, my predictions for next season, Ghost and Angela will become mortal enemies because now he realized he can never trust this bitch and she will drop his ass like it's hot <laughs> when it suits her. Um, he'll find out what Tasha did, but I don't really give a fuck about that. I hope next season they have Tasha doing her and I don't give a fuck about that nigga. Um, I really just want them to do better character development for Tasha's character. I'm just so sick of them playing her and giving her little bit parts here and there and focusing so much on Angie and her rotten ass Spanish pussy. I'm so sick of it. Ghost will be in jail, but you know, he going to get out real quick on, uh, probably going to get him out of jail real quick on that. But while he's in jail, Tasha will have to figure out how to get their kid away from Canaan and she'll have to use Tommy for help. But then she'll all, they'll also find out that Dre was a part of the whole thing. They'll be mad at him about that. But I don't think they're going to get rid of Dre's character that quick. He might die off next season though, because he betrayed Ghost in them. Um, Tommy will continue to grow as a kingpin. Uh, we'll find out where Keisha is. She's not dead because if she was dead, they would have revealed it. Told y'all she's not dead. She's off somewhere. Um, I think they're going to put Keisha and Tommy together next season because 
he had that would be a ready-made family for him I think it would be a great decision for them to put them two together because then he'll have the family he's always wanted. And I really do believe he has Keisha hiding out somewhere, probably living with him while they were doing this whole thing with Milan. Um, and so now that Milan's dead, she can come back, give Tasha a new love interest next year and continue to have her grow as a boss bitch and not give a fuck about ghosts. I don't want them to be back together. She could do so much better. I want this nigga to realize he was a fucking fool. And I hope next season they finally kill Angela's ass off and that the person that does it will be ghosts. Kind of like, I think they're going to do what they did with Tommy. The only person that could have killed Kylie was Tommy. It had to come from Tommy. Same thing with Ghost and Angie. The only person that it would be befitting to kill Angie will be Ghost. It will have to come from him. He will get rid of her next season. I believe. If not, I'm going to be pissed. I'm just glad this shit is over with. Because this season was... This season was, to me... I, don't, I give the whole season... A B plus. It was so predictable. Unlike season two where we were on the edge of our seats and did not know what was happening. I predicted damn near everything that was going to happen this season. Which further shows I need to be a writer on the show. But whatever. Um, <laughs> they just need to sharpen their tools a little bit for season four. And give us some of that on the edge of our seat shit that we've been wanting. That we've been waiting for. Uh, that's it. Make sure to subscribe to my channel though. To watch all of my other reviews on all the other shows that I do reviews on. Once again, Smells Like Teen Spirit Volume 1 Heiress will be out this Tuesday. So get your coins together. It's a novella. It's not a full novel. So it's a quick and easy read. Great for the kids and for adults as well. It's super dope. Me and my son wrote it together. So take a look at the cover now. And I love you all and I will see you next year. Mm -hmm.